I love to read the story of Jesus' birth in the Gospel of Luke. He's the one who tells us about the adoring shepherds and heralding angels, the manger birth, and the doting old folks in the temple, Simeon and Anna. And Luke reads like the script from a musical. Mary breaks out in song, and then Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, sings, and finally the angel chorus hits the crescendo, glory to God in the highest. Luke is truly merry and bright. And then there's Matthew. He opens with the scandal of Mary's pregnancy and Joseph, her fiancé, contemplating an end to their engagement. And if not for the appearance of the angel, he would have ended it. There's the visit of those mysterious Eastern mystics, the Magi. And then warned in a dream about impending danger, Joseph rouses Mary and the baby from sleep and flees into the night, headed for, of all places, Egypt. And then Herod the insecure and ruthless king who, in an effort to kill Jesus, orders the slaughter of all the boys in Bethlehem two years old and under. Matthew borrows the words of Israel's most woebegone prophet, Jeremiah, to describe the crushing sorrow those Bethlehem families felt. A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. Matthew's telling of the story just doesn't have that joy to the world feel about it. And really that might be just what you or someone you know needs, especially if what's going on in your life right now feels really out of sync with this season. I mean, the world is a a pretty scary place. The economy feels anemic, our cities feel unsafe. The war in Ukraine, the October 7th attack on Israel by Hamas, Rachel weeps for her children still. And those big picture tragedies only serve to frame the very local personal struggles some of us face. Maybe it's good to remember that the world Jesus was born into could be just as inhospitable is the one we're living in now. That when he grew up, he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And that, as the Hebrews writer puts it, he shared in our humanity, all of its joys and all of its sorrows. Christmas is when we celebrate the coming of Christ into the world, what theologians call the incarnation. And more than anything, the incarnation means He gets us. It's not a sermon, just a thought.